Who wants to ride a sled with stock graphics? Not us. Use SledSin 4 for 20% off a discount on Arctic FX graphics. They'll bring your vision to life with hundreds of designs and endless customization options. Your sled will stand out whether you're on the trail or in the backcountry. So hit the link in the description and customize your wrap and use SledSin 4 for 20% off at checkout. Sledson listeners, welcome back to the next episode. We are Rip More Pods here at Hey Days. As always, be sure to check out some of the links in the description. A bunch of discount codes from some badass companies. So, without further ado, um, we've got some special guests. We've got Jack and Dylan from Boondock Nation on this episode. Happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for coming, dude. And then we've got Shay, one of our athletes, on for this one as Yellow. well. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's just get right into it, dude. It's Hey Days. Like already, summer just gone. It's amazing. Went, gone. went by. So hard yeah. to believe, right? <laughs> yeah, dude, it's crazy. What'd you guys do with your summer? Well, a lot of work getting ready for winter. Sure. Yeah. yeah sure. Seriously, but we try to enjoy the summer in the Midwest too. Like, yeah. Love fishing. Love the lake life and just spending time outside. Obviously, when yeah. we're not preparing for this stuff. But yeah. yeah. I think we're both really into outdoor recreation, no matter what it is. Obviously, snowmobiling's the passion. Right. So we're really lucky where we get to talk about snowmobiling like every day. Okay. You know, right when the season stops, we're already starting to plan out where we're going on trips for next season. Right. Renewing sponsorships. You know, reporting what we did over the past season yep. and then uh, we've got a broadcast TV show that comes out in the fall too yep. right so we do eight weeks of broadcast TV uh, on the Valley Sports channels and out in Mountain TV in Colorado now so each of those goes through an editing process you know sure. to make sure they're really polished and then next thing you know we're here yeah yeah <laughs> Dude, blink of an eye yeah. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Yeah. you guys yeah. Uh, Wisconsin yes so where yeah. you live okay northern yeah. Wisconsin northern yeah. Wisconsin yeah, yeah Eagle yeah. River area yeah. gotcha Home of the uh, World Championship Snowmobile Derby. Okay, so, there you go. Yeah, yeah, lots of lots of snowmobiling the routes there. Yeah. yeah, heck yeah. So um, let's take it back for a little history lesson. So Boondock Nation, how did that come to be? How'd that come together? Fruition started uh, about ten years ago. Honestly, 2015. Well, that's when we were claiming 2014. Technically, if we're if we're getting back to it, yeah, for sure. When we started the Facebook page, we were in high school. Yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. So we you guys went school. to high school together. Then that's how you guys met. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And we knew each other through out like middle school and stuff. But we had an English class together and some other friends in there. We all were just talking about snowmobiling like all fall. And we're like, well, we got to ride this winter. So we started going up to the UP of Michigan. Mm -hmm. You know, riding off trail. We had just grown up riding on trail. You know, riding to school and stuff like that. And uh, we started hitting the power lines. We're like, we're doing some crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know? oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we were like, what should we call this? You know, we came up with Boondock Nation, started a Facebook page, and started an Instagram, and uh, started to get some traction. Yeah. You know, and Dylan's dad uh, was into TV production. He kind of got us started with a pilot episode, sent a couple of his guys out in the woods with us. We dragged them out there literally in an otter sled. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they kind of showed us how to structure an episode and produced a pilot episode for us. And then we came here to Hey Days. We were out in like the back 40, yeah. you know, the trying the perimeter yeah. booth. And uh, just were spreading the good word of Boondock Nation. Had some little handouts and we were saying, uh, you know, we're going to have this TV series starting up. We met some sponsors that took it seriously like bikeman performance and arctic fx and you know fly. some of these fly racing yeah, yeah, yeah. some of these there other companies that got on board right away because they're like we should get some snowmobiling on tv yeah we and, see the value uh, in this yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and that's what encouraged us to then do a season and start building the brand sure that's nice to have support and see that at such an early stage that's what's so yeah. cool about this community yeah yeah you know, from what we've noticed, like when we were starting out, everybody was willing to give a helping hand. Just about everybody was willing to give a helping hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should say. Yeah, and we're trying to return the favor now too. Like, well, you know, with the power go, hour and it should go both ways. Yeah, right, right, right. Yep. exactly. Pay it forward. Yeah, yep. hundred percent. That's kind of what you guys have been doing. I feel like over the last couple of years, right? Putting putting other cities and stuff on the map and going. Uh, what you guys do last year? A coast to coast deal, huh? Yeah, coast to coast. What yeah. was that like? Coast to coast. It was an experience for sure. Oh, I bet. <laughs> a, lot <laughs> a lot of miles. <laughs> a lot of time in the truck. Yeah. yeah. No, it was sick though. It was 
you know, it's been a goal of ours to ride, obviously, the West Coast as we've kind of been inching further and further that, yeah. that way over uh, the last 10 years of doing this. But, you know, with the opportunity to work with Backwoods BMP and, you know, obviously the Coast to Coast mission, it just made a ton of sense last year yeah. to try to make it happen out east, you know. Yeah. Despite the low snow, we still made it happen. It was It was so cool. Riding out there on the East Coast, especially seeing the sled culture and community out there. And then the terrain, too, is obviously yeah. very legit. Sure. Not knowing what to expect at all. We thought it might be <laughs> kind of similar to, like, the UP, is yeah. my guess. But, you know, it's a, lot, it's a lot bigger stuff than you would think you'd find out there. Oh, really? Big, yeah, Quebec's stuff. pretty cool. Yeah. You know, we were originally going to ride in Maine, but they had a winter similar to the Midwest. Yeah. You know, a yeah. couple, couple storms, but not much for yeah. riding. So uh, we drove 12 hours north of the Backwoods shop north of Portland yes, to smokes. the Gaspé Peninsula of Quebec. And uh, it's all French speaking up there. It's all oh, yeah. coastal, like mm-hmm. little, you know, bay towns. It's pretty wild. Really wild. Um, but it's 4,000 foot mountains. You know, you think you're in Jackson Hole at 5,500 feet. You ride up to 9,500 feet. That's a 4,000 foot change. Here you're just at zero and you go up to 4,000 or 4,200. Um, but it's all thick. You know, you never get above tree line. So it's challenging oh, i, I mean it would be a very difficult <laughs> place to learn right? how yeah. to ride off trail yeah so that's why those east coast people when they come out west you know once they get used to the altitude they can usually shred right sure wide yeah. open space let's go yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? the trees are farther yeah. than three feet apart yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. well then you guys made it over into our home state of oregon yep, yep. how was that yeah. very cool it rained on us so yeah. not gonna lie while we were yeah. there sweet but <laughs> we honestly had a blast. It yeah, was one of the couple of times we've ridden in true rain, but we had a lot, a lot of fun. Did some cool exploration too. Yeah. It felt cool like spring caves. riding. Yeah. It was the end of January. Yeah, uh, but it felt like it was springtime because mm-hmm. you were just yeah. slushing around and sliding, and uh, yeah. we were yeah. warm enough, you know, yeah. thankfully. Oh, but yeah. yeah, the lava tubes that we checked out, yeah. and you know, some of the riding in the tops of volcanoes, you know, where you can literally see the entire ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was totally different yeah where was that was that out of ben lapine lapine that's what it was okay gotcha gotcha yeah Yeah. and it was for the oregon state snowmobile association convention um so we didn't really know what to expect coming into that and they were so supportive of us. They had us speak at Look their keynote event. Get, oh, my God. It's yeah, jumping in. <laughs> what up, boys? Backwards yeah. crashed the party. Here we go. Oh, they found him. We got what we needed. Let's Hell go. Yeah. Crashed the party Let's real go. Quick, but I figure there's no time like the present. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, boys. Good to see you guys. Hey, Michael, you Yeah. <laughs> Oh Hell man, I'm yeah. dis- ah, my, that just mullet put mine to shame. Good lord! Last time I saw him is Jackson Hole. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That hey, guy's thanks guys. guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. To the VIP party. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, Let's go. See you Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, but Oregon State Snowmobile Association, they do a lot for the sport of snowmobiling. We didn't even realize like Oregon's got pretty cool uh, structure with all the clubs and mm-hmm. how they do grooming and yep. it creates a cohesive trail network. Yeah. And, uh, you know, from the state level to the national level in right. Washington, DC, they're advocating for snowmobiling. And, uh, I think that's, you know, there's something to be said for that. There's a lot of groups that are trying to shut down public land oh, access for yes, mechanized yeah, use. You know, exactly. our sport is threatened in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it was really cool to be a part of that and a part of their convention. Yeah. yeah. No, awesome to yeah. see your guys' support as well. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Thank yeah, you. yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we're trying to get more involved with that. So in our local riding area, um, I actually went to a Forest Service meeting, and I'm, I didn't know what to expect or what it was like or whatever. And it was pretty interesting because it was like, I don't know, there's probably like 100 people in there, and it's all good old boy, cowboys, ranchers, and we kind of know how they feel. And they were pretty, pretty heated. Um, and I, in those kind of environments, I kind of like, I get embarrassed like for them. So it was just like really interesting to see like, um, you know, their opinions and stuff. And they have these like projected maps of these zones and it's like everywhere I ride in all of our local zones and stuff. And so it kind of sent me down this spiral of learning more about that and trying to figure out how we could, um, you know, get more involved and they opened it up to the guests and stuff. And I, stood up and i think i was the youngest guy in the room and i stood up and i i like mentioned sled send and i mentioned the podcast and like um how much of an audience we have and stuff and there was a gal with the forest service that was in charge of like the media stuff and i looked at her when i said 
like some of our numbers and from the podcast and everything and she, she just like oh no because <laughs> i invited anybody like the forest service guys yeah and anybody in the room to jump on the podcast like let's talk about this kind of stuff um you know that's all for more than just snowmobiling right yeah, all kind yeah, of motorized yeah, right. stuff but um but i offered a an avenue to talk about it and then i think that um more people in our industry need to be more involved with that kind of stuff because yeah. it's it's a threat yeah we all need sure. to stand up for each other you yep. know all it really takes is one precedent to be set and other areas point their finger at that and say they did this now we can do that yep. you know opens up the floodgates and you know the thing is most of these people are good intentioned people you know yep. they're trying to protect land i guess but you know if you shut down hundreds of thousands of acres of land you can't access nobody can access right. it you know you're just taking away a recreation opportunity from not only our user group but many other user groups it's too. a huge well, economical you, impact yeah that's sure. that's the thing that like, how do you yeah. fund yeah. how do you fund like where's your funding coming from at that point like right. how do you maintain other things well right. even just outside of recreation like shutting down logging like and mm-hmm. keeping the yeah. the forest healthy and stuff right and then no yeah, logging yeah. and then a lightning strike and then the whole thing's burnt up yeah you know exactly. what i mean so like there, there's so many things outside of even just the motorized stuff that's at threat with it. So yeah, I think a lot of the people are good intentions. Some of them are not. They just want. They hate some. Yeah. You don't <laughs> yeah. want to shut yeah. down. But a lot of people get caught up in yeah, <laughs> <laughs> in this virtue. You know, yeah. and it's really yeah. not helping, in my opinion. But yeah, yeah, yeah. At least you know we've got a ton of great areas to ride uh, where we're at. You know, where we spend the winter out mm-hmm. west, and we're always you know keeping an eye on. Uh, the public land fight and if there's you know some controversy in the areas we're trying to use our platform as well to share that out and help yeah um, you know our community support each other so that's awesome that you guys are doing that too yeah the pod yeah, yeah. Yep. and being willing to tell the other side of the story too yeah yep. by 100%. inviting the other yep. side of it on too yeah it's awesome so um i do want to give you guys huge props with your brand and your content yeah, that you oh my gosh your cool content is killer both you guys are really good on camera Thank obviously you. that's something that we pay attention to with all the filming stuff that we do but um your guys's entire online persona is is sick and your brand and everything so um kind of with that being said like uh what do you guys have planned for this upcoming season that you can reveal this this episode will probably come out like probably like in november okay perfect so i don't know if you're releasing stuff prior to that that you can tell now but uh <laughs> yeah well thanks <laughs> thanks for yeah, the kind no, words yeah, it's, first it, of all cool. yeah it's Appreciate been fun that. fun building it like no it's not easy for most people to talk on camera you know and us yeah. that's for sure but mm-hmm. 10 years into it we're starting to get that you've ran some yeah. reps <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah but um next year is going to be our 10th season you know we keep yeah. talking about 10 years it's kind, kind of a big deal for us so uh we're ramping it up yeah. for next season for sure uh we've been working on the destination trips the events that we've got planned mm-hmm. uh, so we could start there we've got out west sled fest that kind of anchors the beginning part of the season that's in january, in, january yeah. in island park idaho oh heck mm-hmm. yeah you know, so hotel like mountain resort yeah. yeah yeah that's a fun one that'll be what it's fifth fifth year of, yeah. of that now That's great. It's growing. Uh, We had a cool sled show and shine last year. Obviously, we have a party element to it. We had like a casino night last year. That was super cool. But that's a growing event, and uh, we're stoked about that one for sure. Yeah, and starting to raise some money, too, for good causes like the Adam Anderson Avalanche Project. Okay. Um, You know, the casino night, we weren't playing with real money, but the buy-in, like, all went to that. We did some raffles and stuff. Um, So trying to help the community, and the community is jumping on board, too. Now it's like every restaurant has live music you know thursday it's earlier Friday, in the week now yeah, yeah. Growing yeah. And, growing. and yeah. we're starting to add um some avalanche education components yeah. duncan Good. lee came last year and oh, did nice. some like informal training but um looking at get, adding some cert courses there too mm-hmm. where you can actually mm-hmm. get your avi one or your airy one i should say yeah. um or do a companion rescue or something like that so looking forward to that in january and then spring fever is one we launched last year at beaver creek lodge down in garden city utah um great riding around there yeah it's the weekend after jackson hole nice um so there were avalanche course offerings there um and then we had just an awesome setup their lodge is at like 7500 feet oh that's nice and they got 100 acres of private up there so we built (laughs) we built a track well they built a track nate did an awesome job in the snowcat and built a snow cross track we had a beater cross race um we had a cookout mini we sled had races yeah mini sled races Those and then underrated. Yeah. Yeah. yeah way underrated yeah and at fun. each of these there's group <laughs> rides during the day right you know yeah. where it's and 
at the nightly events, people make new friends and you get new riding groups going. And I mean, there's a lot of people that I've met at these events that mm -hmm. have made riding friends for life, I think. Oh, so yeah. yeah, it's pretty sweet. And then in the middle of that, we go back to the Midwest um, and ride the UP a bit. And we've got a radar run at Ben's camp um, that we've been a part of for the last few years. And uh, it's kind of a big deal in the Midwest. Thousands of sledders come out to that one what, and stop through. What is that? A yeah. What's a radar run? So it's basically a timed, what is it, a thousand feet that you guys do out there? Yeah. yeah it's just see how fast you can Balls go on the a radar wall. run. Let's go. Yeah. yeah like That's nice. Radar. It's different classes. And yeah. uh, some guys bring the outlaw sleds out that are like billet oh. chassis, you know, six, 700 yeah. horsepower yeah. sleds. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> They're laying down, you know, 140, 150 miles an hour and 500 Jeez. Yeah. That's cool to see in person. On oh, I'm snow. sure. Very, very yeah. cool. Not even yeah. on ice. That'll like they're fun. doing yeah. that on snow, on yeah. packed snow, which is crazy. Yeah. But uh, then to cap it all off, there's a bikini run at the end. That's a fundraiser and a dash for cash. So oh, chicks nice. go in bikinis, no dudes allowed. And uh, <laughs> the I'm fastest out. girl goes <laughs> home with a grand. And they usually raise some money for like um, yeah. women on snow and the pink ribbon riders and nice. stuff like that. So Nice. Heck yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so those are the events that kind of staple the season. In between there, we'll be going all over the place again, um, trying to make it back to Canada mm -hmm. this season, down to Colorado, Colorado. Um, maybe back to Oregon. Yeah. We, I was going to yeah. say, we yeah. talked about it a little bit at Heydays last year, but would love to host you um, for a ride. We've got some honey holes that <laughs> <laughs> that guy over there doesn't like to disclose. <laughs> we just, uh, every time we go there, he just puts the Himalayas on the location of this, this story but, um but no it would be it would be cool um i think i told you last year too i've got um i have an airbnb business and i have multiple airbnbs and we can put you guys up in, in a oh, house sweet. for free and that would be cool and uh yeah i mean i know you guys have a busy schedule or whatever but we can just stay in touch and see if we can make something happen that'd be fun let's talk yeah. about it yeah, yeah. even Absolutely. if it was for a day or two that we yep. could get together yeah that would yeah. be great yeah. yeah and uh i guess the last thing to mention too being that it's season 10 and this isn't going to be out till November. We're going to Alaska. Nice. Oh, yeah. There you go. Hell yeah. Be yeah. The first time. Hey, what's up, guys? We're here at Hey Days, and I'm standing here with Dayton from Albany Lodge, and he's going to tell you a little bit about what they have to offer. Hey, guys. So we're a certified Players Adventures outfitter located in Albany, Wyoming. Uh, we have 13 cabins and nine hotel rooms. Uh, we offer a fleet of sleds in the winter for rent, as well as in the summer of side by sides. Um, if you guys are looking to do something a little bit different, we offer guiding, fishing guides, all of the above. Um, at the end of the day, get dirty, get tired, stop in the bar and grab a drink, get bites to eat, have a good time. Heck yeah, and be sure to use Sledson 4 for 15% off the lodging and their entire rental fleet, whether you're here for the winter to ride sleds or in the summer for side by side. Yes, yeah. oh, in wow. the winter at yeah. least, Dylan's mm -hmm. been up there in the summer. Yeah, but. heck yeah. So you know, we wanted to do something big to cap off season 10. And uh, that's like the birthplace, big air backcountry snowmobiling, mm -hmm. you know, and it's always been a dream for us to go up there. So we, we don't have uh, the complete plan together yet. Sure. We just know that we're going. Sometimes that's yeah. the best, though. You just yeah. know yeah. the destination. Not we're really gonna, sure what we're going to do, but we're going to have fun. Yeah. 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 And it's probably going to be one of the most epic videos we've ever done as Hell Big Duck yeah. Nation, too, exactly. when it's all said and done. So yeah. something to look forward to. Yeah. For sure. Excited for that. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. so, so you guys, you were saying you guys come out west for the winter. Do you guys have like a, a home base out west in the winter? Yeah, we've uh, we've kind of considered eastern Idaho basically to be okay. our home for the last eight or so winters. Now it'll be yeah living out there. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's a good location for us. You know, it's eight, ten hours to get down to Colorado, yep. not far to shoot up to Montana, you know, over to Oregon, yeah. up to Canada is not bad. Um, oh, that's smart. And Isn't that part of just some sick riding around there too so isn't that part yeah. of david's mcclure's his we stayed at his place last december okay um yeah we we've got a farmhouse now a ranch okay. we call it mm -hmm. the bn ranch uh that we rent in the winter <laughs> nice but we couldn't get in there in december last year so we stayed at oh, okay. dave's gotcha and he's got a sweet setup i mean for anyone looking to come ride our neck of the woods yeah. um Dave's got an awesome unit, Airbnb. It's You can rent the top or the bottom or both. Um, it's got a garage with like race deck flooring. Mm -hmm. There's a uh, sled in the basement, actually, an old cat. And there's <laughs> like all sorts of D Rob and Dave stuff yeah. on the walls. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's a great Very setup cool. for sledders. And then um, we'll do some stuff in December at Stephen Clark's this year, too, mm -hmm. at uh, Teton Base Camp, which is just over the pass from where we're at. Nice. Because um, yeah. he's got a great shop for like the sled build stuff. Yeah. You know, That's when we've ideal. got... 
a few sleds to work on and a bunch of parts um it's yeah. nice to have that extra space but yeah yeah no we're just down the road from dave's rental though nice. um there that's in swan nice. valley yeah sweet well you mentioned sleds that's what i want to ask next is what are you guys going to be on this season i've got a 154 skidoo turbo free ride and there then a go. 146 and a free ride as yeah. well yeah Nice. I went a little crazy last year and bought three sleds. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I decided to keep one. Yeah. Uh, 24 Polaris 9R uh, 146. That was just a riot and got it built up nice. And then the season was over. Um, yeah. So I'm going to dial that one in a little bit more for the season. And then I ordered a Skidoo Turbo, a free ride 146. Oof. I'm going to put a 154 under it for most of the season and then probably swap spring it back time. to 146 in the spring. Yeah. yeah. I love the track speed of the 146 turbo. It's so fun for jumping, mm -hmm. but just not super practical for mid season. Yeah. You know, when it gets deep. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go the super short slash tunnel with the uh, 154 on the 146. That'd chassis. be a cool look. Oh, yeah. Are we gonna are we are we gonna see a, a jungle redemption line on the one 154 <laughs> turbo? We make it back to McCall, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. McCall's done us dirty a few times. Yeah. 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 I did like uh, I did like what was that? You guys put that in the oven? Did, did you dry yeah. that dry yeah. that out in the oven? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, old. yeah I can tell <laughs> that, that so story dope. real quick. So everyone's seen the video of oh, you yeah. dumping it in the wall. Like that went so viral. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah we were sitting there for a long time talking about how like i was trying to get kyle saxon to jump over it like downhill and land where i was and we were all like trying to pick lines around it and then i went for it and totally screwed it up <laughs> ended up in the drink and we helied that thing out i was freezing so i went back I'm to sure. the airbnb yeah I, we didn't even think we were getting a heli that day but cody monroe called a little Somehow guy pulled it off. Was there in 10 minutes Don't i ended up it. venmoing him never even met the dude and uh, they bring the sled back to the trailer, and I just immediately started tearing it apart. I mean, the headlights were full of water. Everything's full of water. Seat weighed like 60 pounds. You know, yeah, it was geez. just ridiculous. But I'm like, we got to dry this thing out as fast as we can. So we cranked the heat in the trailer, got some extra propane tanks. I just started pulling stuff apart. So pulled it down to the jugs on one side, pulled the exhaust off on the other, um, sucked all the water out with a shop vac, stuck heat guns in there, started drying out the block. Pulled all the electronics apart, the servos, the ECM, the gauge, everything, put in pounds of rice, 10 pounds of rice. Oh, geez. This yeah. is an operation. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh. Put the turbo in the oven on a cookie sheet, low temp, <laughs> like 200, 250 degrees, not enough to like cook the bearing, but enough to bake the water out of it. Um, and then just dried out as much as I can. Every electrical, electrical connection spraying out with air. Uh, we drove home from a call, five hours, six hours, yep. with it all torn apart. And then I slapped it back together in the trailer that night. Um, and after heat on in the trailer, like yeah, continuous yeah. for like 48 hours. I'd filled the block with oil too. Uh, yeah. Like just pouring it in from the uh, intake side, filled the case with oil, sucked all that out, slapped it back together, started on the first pull. That's ridiculous. <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 So Holy if you sink an E-Tech turbo. It will run. It will run. That's Rice and 200 do. degrees. Now yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it ran great after yeah. that. I took it out for yeah. a couple rides. Oh, and, then, yeah. uh, and then it had a catastrophic engine failure. The flywheel blew up, oh. actually, which was very strange. Yeah. Um, but no, great sled. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, was, yeah. that was fun to see. <laughs> yeah, that, that was, was an awesome, yeah, awesome so, one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the viewers McCall's were happy <laughs> about that line choice. We, yeah, we totaled a truck in McCall. We crashed a drone oh. into the river. We like McCall blew up another slide on that same trip. Oh too. yeah, remember that's Jordan right. blew it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it, oh, <laughs> what what was the whole? What was the truck? Uh, it came into the parking lot. Yeah, and it was like glare ice in there. It was just like a very oh, light no. dusting of snow. Came in, we were the only ones there. Phil Wybar actually was meeting us there. We were yep. gonna go take some photos and came pulling in and uh, the ass end of the truck just kicked out a little bit and it just would not correct. Crunched I was trying it. to grab trailer brake, trailer brake, and it was just slow motion, <laughs> crunched it. Oh. Yeah, full That's cab right. corner, rear door, yep. rear window, and then we were the, the garbage bag and tape guys for the rest of the time we were up there. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked. Well, whatever you gotta do to get it done yeah. though. The yeah. truck was like brand new too. It still yeah. had the screen protector on the yeah. touch screen. Oh. Yeah, it had like two thousand miles on it or something. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> broke it in. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah, but McCall is a cool spot. That's it for is. sure. Oh, you know, yeah. we we travel around and see a lot of cool sledding destinations. McCall's, you know, despite the lickings that we've taken, it's one of our favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Just I, I right went there, there. Uh, last year. I went there twice, but that was my first time going there, and I was like, oh. This is why everybody loves this place so yeah. much. It was yeah. a cool town, it's cool riding. Some yeah. of the deepest snow, honestly, we've ever ridden was 
was up there on that fly ride a couple years ago. You're it was right. Insane. Oh my yeah, gosh. Getting nuked on there. Yeah. yeah. Fun. And fun a little bit lower elevation too. You know, the sleds breathe, you breathe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Love McCall. Storms stack up and just kind of stay in there and yeah. nuke. Yeah. Super yeah. cool town too. It is. The you vibe's guys, fun. Did you guys, were you there? Was it two years ago when every rider tripped for the seven feet in McCall? I think we were there just at like the start or the tail end of that or something. Yeah. Yeah. Literally yeah. Every rider, like, they loaded That's where we're going. <laughs> yeah, it was nutty yeah. for a while there. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. true. I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Um, I want to talk a little bit on the topic of uh, sponsorships. So you guys have been playing this game for quite a while. Um, and so for like the listeners and like the kids and the up and comers and stuff and they're starting to reach out to companies and um you know playing that whole sponsorship game um what's some of the things that you guys have done i mean obviously you guys bring a lot of value to the industry and have a huge platform and everything um but what's your guys's like mindset around your interactions with these companies and the things that you guys are trying to do to like one thing that we say is like we try to under promise and over deliver mm -hmm. um and a big thing for us like especially with the podcast and stuff we're trying to um shift away from like a traditional sponsorship or ambassador and move more into partnerships because um, a big thing for us that i really really care about is the relationship aspect of it um and so like speaking to the listeners and viewers like tips and and how you know how do you guys handle those interactions with these companies and because you guys have had you know yeah. a handful for a really long time um you know how how do you guys handle i think you pretty much nailed it i mean you know the partnership word is huge and relationships is huge and long term that's something we've always yep. had in our vocabulary since day one um you know fly has been with us since the very beginning we've had fly helmets forever and uh, now they're even more with us in a bigger way, you know, head to toe. So uh, I think that just speaks volumes about what we're trying to do. You know, we're aligned obviously big time with Backwoods BMP. Yep. Like it's all about the relationships and the people and it's such a small industry that, you know, it's just really tight knit and it's cool. And you start to get in a groove with the people you work with, you can do really cool things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And you know, there's ups and downs sure. in business, you know, especially seasonal mm -hmm. stuff like this. Look at last season, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. You, there's got to be some give and take and the industry is the community is only so big you know yeah. so you can't just go jump ship at the slightly yeah. better offer because yeah no you do people that get shiny object twice. syndrome yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. this company is yeah yeah exactly um so with a lot of our partners you know they've picked us up when we're down and we try and pick them up when they're down yeah you know mm -hmm. like um our some of our midwest folks just mm -hmm. really hurting after last season so we're trying to do yeah. what we can to help them out and yeah. um you know, we we always ask that kind of question too when we're first getting to know somebody and a company wants to work with us is, you know, it, where's the support going to come from from them too? It's we, we're looking for more than just you know a check or some parts yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, definitely keeping that communication open and talking ideas of how we can grow and how we can do cool stuff together. Continue to push and evolve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So I think that's for a big each part other, of it. right? Yeah, just as much for them as it is what they do for you. Yeah, for sure. But you know. That's for us being established for somebody first starting out. You know, I would say events like this are huge. You know, this this is a small world and people remember faces mm -hmm. yeah. really well. So if you can go around to these events, you'd be surprised the people, you know, you guys have seen it. The people that are here at Heydays are often the decision makers yeah. Yeah. for a lot of these companies. <laughs> yeah, so, true. Yep. you know, you can go and meet a ton of people that you need to meet to make things happen uh, on a sponsorship level at events like this, which is super cool. A lot of other industries, I don't think, can really say that. Um, yeah. So that's a big thing, and that's kind of how we got started is coming to Heydays, going to the Milwaukee show. going. We'd to have Nova, a list like, of all the people we wanted to go introduce ourselves to. And, yeah. You know, yeah yeah and we give them something to you know yeah. like um showing their your appreciation um you know with some real world product experience or with some photos of the product you know like giving them something off the bat yep. um providing some value you know uh right off the bat is huge but yep. that's another thing too i think is over delivering and everybody yep. needs social media content these days yep. you can start shoveling some good content to a company, they're going to notice, they're going to need that. And they're, yeah. if they're using it, you know, that's great for you too. So um, I think that's a great way today, you know, and given the state of social media and our industry is to get your foot in the door is to just start putting out good content and yep. get, delivering it to them, yeah. to mm -hmm. these companies and seeing their response. You know, yeah. if, if they use the content, they're going to keep coming back for more. Yeah. yeah. 
that yeah, makes absolutely. sense. Absolutely. Yeah, that's one way I look at it. Like if working with a company and they have a contract with you know five things on it for requirements or whatever. Okay, cool. What's like six, seven, and eight things that we can do? Um, you know, and for us, it's a little bit with the with the avenue that we have with the podcast, right? Um, it's more than just social media posts. So that's a whole other outlet, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit different, but um, that's how we try to you know frame everything that that we're we're doing. So. Um, but it's an, it's important. It's an it's an interesting game to play once you're in the trenches and stuff <laughs> with with these companies and whatnot. But yeah. um, you know, working together and figuring out how we can collectively push the industry. You know, so yeah, hundred percent. And you know, it's it's tough too because you have such good relationships with people in the industry. But at the end of the day, it is business mm-hmm. yeah. too. So you yeah. gotta you gotta maintain that. And uh, we always say clean. Fence lines make for happy neighbors. Yep. You know, so setting the expectation right away and laying it out there. If you go above and beyond, great. But at least everyone's on the same page. You know, right. communication is yeah. huge in that way. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, I think a big thing too, especially for like the younger generation. Um, you know, I I outside of Sleds End, I run a couple other businesses. I've done business for several years, um, so I kind of have understanding of that. Whereas, like a lot of people may not understand the frame of business and so like getting a discount or whatever that's literally like food off the table of that owner of that company right and that needs to be understood and respected um versus like oh yeah free free stuff or discount whatever like um that is of value to the owner of that that company that needs to be taken into consideration and appreciated you know totally totally yeah that's 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 what they do you know that's that's their product that's it's their business. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know for us, you know, when a friend buys some merch, you know, it doesn't ask for a discount or what they just like, but we see yep. an online order come through for a mm. friend or something like that. It's like, that's sweet. That's you know, cool. that's, Absolutely. Yeah. that's some true Speaks support volumes. right yeah. there. And not everyone's in the position to do that. You know, I get sure. it. But um, shoot, was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, at the same time too, like our friends helping us out here at the trade shows, you know, that like that goes a long way too. that yeah. kind of support. You know, we, this is a grassroots thing. We don't have the budget to go hire a bunch of people to set all our stuff up. Right, right, right. So, um, and then I guess the last thing I would say too is a lot of these companies may seem like they're big, enormous companies, and they're not. You know, it's a few guys <laughs> yeah. that are yeah. making the whole thing happen. So, sure. um, going back to the discount thing, it it can be a big impact. You know, totally. right. when it, uh, it when you've got companies that seem so big, but it's really just a few guys yeah. making it happen mm-hmm. behind the scenes. And then scene. especially you add in. A, a terrible snow season like last year oh yeah yeah hurts everybody yeah. all around oh, yeah. <laughs> no doubt yeah so speaking of companies um backwoods and this whole power hour and you guys because you guys at heydays last year was the first time you guys teamed up with a party because you guys used to do a boondock party yourselves yeah so how did that idea come well come together it really just made sense to be honest like they kind of presented to us the idea that they had a more optimal space for the party and we're like hey you know our space is kind of limited at the end of the day honestly for sure. a partying situation let's yeah. let's do it right and let's come yeah. over there so they've got a banger of yeah a booth. yeah <laughs> they make things happen man yeah. I mean, they've oh. got an army over there uh yeah. that they brought from maine and it's incredible <laughs> to see i mean going back to us being a small team you know we are limited physically with some of the stuff we could do at the booth and they are just it's a full construction scene over mm-hmm. there right yeah. now yeah it's a job site yeah sure. it is well they got <laughs> here on tuesday i think didn't they yeah yeah, I think so. yeah so i think gary johnson rolled in last sunday a whole week early. oh my gosh <laughs> dude yeah but uh they've been huge supporters of us you know going back to partnerships too yep. in yep. more ways uh than just giving us bumpers so that's one example you know they're like we can we have the infrastructure to do this we've got the support like the staff um so we partnered up on it and it was a huge success last year. I mean, they got a ton of space. We were able to fit a ton of people in there. We went through a lot of beer really fast. I can tell you that. <laughs> yes. um, we're going to have yeah. even more this year. They don't yeah. call yeah. it power hour for nothing. Huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the party, it started, like you said, a few years ago, and it's just really grown into being the industry event here at Hey Days. Um, there's been other events on Friday night, which I guess is no longer. Uh, the county's shut down Friday oh. parties here at Hey Days. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. unfortunately. So this hmm. year we're the sole party. Um, so gotcha. we'll see how that goes. But we've got like a thousand of these official yeah, a lot party of passes. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna find out our capacity this year. <laughs> yeah. And then Power Hour taking place just before that. Um, is really just going to another level. Yeah. By the time this comes out, it will have already happened. But we started the event last year. Um, Backwood said, we've got 
uh, an event on the calendar with Heydays, you know, with our sponsorship of Heydays, we get a dedicated event. What should we do with it? We're like, well, we do video content like that. That's our main thing. Why don't we do some sort of video content premiere live event? Yeah. So we got some of the biggest names in the industry from Brett Turcott to Muskoka Freerider, Caleb Kaserki, Kyle Saxon, yeah. Jay Menaberry, Blaine Matthews. All these guys jumped on board to put together some exclusive content to premiere there. Um, you know, sled films back in the day, there was like the sled film festival, right? Up yep. by your guys' neck of the yep. woods. Mm -hmm. um, there's stuff like that. And Alpine Sled Styles out there too, uh, right. it's online, super sweet. But everybody's here, like let's do something at Heydays, yeah, right? together. Yeah. Um, so it was a great turnout. We gave away a ton of stuff. Chet was giving away golden tickets for bumper sets like they were going out of style. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we, we gave you away an Arctic you FX wrap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Arctic FX wrap, like all kinds of stuff. But this year, we really wanted to take it to the next level. So we're going to change a couple lives is how it's going to how it's going to turn out. I love that. Um, we're giving away ten thousand dollars to the creator that wins this year. So through a nomination Crazy. process uh, God, from our founding fathers, we're calling them. That's Turcotte and Matt and Jay and Blaine and these guys. They nominated some folks. The top nominees were selected and then we opened it up to the public. Um, there are application. There's an application period um, that asks questions you know, ranging from how many days do you ride a year to what are you going to do with $10,000, uh, you know, improve your production or whether it's, you know, buying camera equipment or funding a uh, film sled or trip. sled trip or whatever, yeah. you know, we wanted to hear about that. And then the judges all chose the remaining participants. So that's our lineup of, of six creators. One of them is going to go home with $10,000 and then somebody in the audience who's there supporting and being a part of this is going to go home with a sled of their choice. Yeah, so crazy. Either a Gen 5 850 <laughs> Summit, a uh, Matrix RMK, or a Catalyst M600. So wow. I, I don't know. I don't think anyone's ever done anything no, like this at Hey Days before. No. And I don't think we could have done it by ourselves. I don't think sure. Backwoods could have done it by themselves. And it's just like the perfect example of a partnership working as it should. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah this, this wasn't necessarily anything that's like on the contract between us. Uh, this is just something that we want to do to push the industry forward and push, you know, the age of content creation and digital content creation forward. So, yeah, I love it. Absolutely. We're still going to be, yeah, this is yeah. dope. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you're hearing from us right now, like 24 hours before it's about to go down. The nerves are starting to set in. Cause I think I have no idea how many people are going to be there, but I think it's going to be a It'll lot. Be a lot. Like, oh, yeah, for sure. We've been putting it out there that you can win a free sled. So yeah. it's all going to go down tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. I'm stoked for it. Um, topic changed a little bit. Um, I want to talk about uh, your guys' fitness stuff. So I saw a post. I don't remember the company that you're working with, but you guys are doing like a bunch of testing yeah, for fitness stuff. So what's... What's that all about? So we went down to North Carolina at in May, was it? The end of May? Yeah. So I guess backs up a little bit here. But last year we started working with Possible, um, Possible Foods. They make a whole bunch of workout, you know, healthy type. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a full line of pre-workout pre -workout, protein yeah. bars, powders. But the difference is, is it's all it's certified all, organic. It's all whole food based. And they've got a 900 acre certified organic farm in Southern Wisconsin oh, nice. where they grow like most of the products that go into the bar. So wow. um, they've got an R and D farm where they're constantly studying these different strains of plants that contain more selenium or more magnesium or whatever. And uh, they're putting that certain strain of plant into these bars to make them as nutritious as possible. They study all this stuff at their nutrition innovation center, which is down in North Carolina on the uh, North Carolina Research Campus. This is where like Duke, UNC, Appalachia State mm -hmm. all have research labs as okay. well. So they flew us down there to begin this study, which is crazy because not only do they look like crop development and formulation, but they also look at how it impacts the human body down there. And uh, we kicked off this study. They drew our blood and they're doing like the most comprehensive blood pa panel I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, and then they took us across to Appalachia State um, we're in a guy named Dr. David Neiman's lab. Neiman's got like 350 published papers. Yeah. I've like just a ridiculous amount of published papers. And um, they did, tested our like body composition in a few different ways. So it's like um, you grab the handles and it sends shocks in through your body. Scan. Yeah. 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 In body scan, then bod pod, where you go in this hyperbaric chamber mm -hmm. and it pressurizes and measures you that way. And then we did a DEXA 
full body DEXA scan, which is like a uh, two stage light X-ray for bone density, lean muscle mass and everything. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then there is physical tests like max deadlift or leg dynamometer as it's called grip strength. Um, so this is very applicable to snowmobiling because max deadlift, you're grabbing like a stationary bar down it's by your knees and, and pulling as hard as you can. Like you're trying to get a sled on stuff. Yep. Yeah. Grip strength, you know, you're squeezing the throttle, you're squeezing, hanging onto the handlebars. And then VO2 max. So that is your body's ability to exchange oxygen. Um, it is the ultimate marker of fitness. Mm-hmm. It is probably the most important metric uh, for a snowmobiler because we're riding at elevation, yep. you know, and we're working really hard. It's also the number one predictor of longevity and health span. Too, okay. If you have a VO2 max um, in like the upper fifth percentile, for example, you have the least amount of chance of dying, you know, from all mm. cause mortality by a long shot. Uh, so VO2 max is like the ultimate fitness measure. So we tested all of these things. Now they've put us on specific protocols like supplements and possible products that we eat every day. Mm -hmm. And we're doing that for six months in the off season here, keeping our normal training protocols just as we normally would. And we're going back down there at the end of October. They're going to redo all those assessments. And then after the season next year, we'll go back down and they'll see what it's like after the season. So we're going to see how the body changes, you know, being at low elevation versus high elevation, Mm -hmm. um, how our training affects it, how the nutrition protocol uh, affects it. But it's just really cool to be a part of this as a snowmobiler. Like and the fact that a company like this is looking at snowmobiling standard process has been around for almost a hundred years, making whole food health products. Um, They've got a huge lineup. I mean, it's a huge company. And for them to be buying into snowmobiling like this is just awesome. I mean, yeah, you've yeah, got absolutely. other companies that are actively trying to shut down what we yeah. do. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so that coupled with what we're going to learn from it, I think is just Very outstanding. Cool. Yeah. Dude, you guys are all in on this, and I think it's yeah. sick. <laughs> fitness is, <laughs> fitness yeah. is so, so, so important. Um, yeah. Obviously within snowmobiling, but like every aspect of your life. Totally. Right? Like yeah. how you perform day to day within like your family, your business, your work, your job, whatever, like it's, you know, every aspect is affected by fitness. Yeah. So that's super cool that you guys are, I'm excited yeah, to see you guys, you guys will have more to, about it. You guys will have to come over to the booth and meet Jack Dubois. Uh, okay. He's, it's his family's, his family's company, company and he's who yeah. got us involved with it. He's in our booth. Okay. Um, he does freestyle <laughs> jet ski stuff. And, oh, uh, that's who's Richter's yeah. over there? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So you guys will have to come try some of the stuff and check it out. But oh, yeah. seriously, anybody can check it out on our website. We've got a deal on there. And uh, their stuff is absolutely incredible. You hear organic, plant-based, and I think a lot of people like have a perception. Mm-hmm. Um, but this stuff is legit. I'm a meat eater. You know, I love wild game. Yeah. This is like the perfect complement for fuel on the go, you know, uh, to a healthy lifestyle. So. Cool. We're really stoked about it. We're stoked they're supporting snowmobiling and supporting us. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, we can link all that stuff in the description so they can check oh, it out. Oh, awesome. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Hell yeah. Great. Nice. Cool. Um, let's do some some little hot take stuff. Um, all what right. is what is um, what is the most uh, overrated <laughs> overrated snowmobile mod? Hey, it's Robin Cook with Truck Boss Dex. Just wanted to show off our eight foot Truck Boss. It's 100% aluminum, made in America. You never have to take it off in the summertime. A year-round use, dry and secure storage underneath. Yeah, absolutely. And be sure to use Sled Sin 4 on the website for 5% off to upgrade your adventure with Truck Boss Decks. Uh. <laughs> 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 Overrated snowmobile mod. Oh, that's gonna be tough. Careful, you don't oh, want to upset yeah, anybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be real, real honest here. Uh, that's... You know that's really it's really tough because we've been pretty sensible you know with our builds i guess the Lately. last few years yeah. trying to think if there's you know i would say can okay i know i got can. it yeah probably either that well you could say i was yeah. gonna say carbon fiber oh, like yeah, a lot of carbon fiber stuff you know you pay so much money you pay thousands to shave singular pounds you know when you could probably do that in your gym yeah too yeah, you know that's like, i don't know <laughs> that's you know? a good point yeah. i'm not some of these builds are just the full carbon tie stuff is so cool like i yeah. i love it i respect it but that's never going to be me spending, yeah you know shelling out thousands of dollars yeah, to say six pounds for sure yeah. yeah yeah i mean a loud can for sure i feel like that's kind of a common thing i'm with you there there's yep. yeah a lot of good options, even if you do want to go lightweight, to still keep yeah. it quiet. Yep. Yeah. So on the flip side, what's the most underrated? 
Handlebar. Uh, handlebar setup, I would say. Mm. So crucial to have that dialed into what fits you, the yep. height, the controls, like the angle of all of it. That's a super important yep. mod, in my opinion. I agree completely. I don't know how anybody rides like the stock Polaris bars. Yeah. Yeah. Personally. Like they hurt my wrists. Yeah. Trying to get off to the side of the sled. Um, and yeah, I think low bars for the win. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm six foot four and I think the stock like expert bars on a skidoo are too tall. And mm -hmm. the stock low bars on a Polaris are too tall. So, I mean, kind of personal preference, but I think sure. it really helps you get in athletic position, you know, especially yeah. really steep side hills if the nose is coming up, that type of thing. Yeah. So that's the first thing we do on all the sleds is bars. Yeah. Uh, and then I would say to couple with that suspension. Suspension. Yeah. 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 Yep. yeah. I think it seems to be a common one yeah. right here. And I, I wonder, like, I've spent some time thinking about that. Like, a lot of people overlook suspension, I think. And I wonder if it's, like, a mental disconnect of, like, well, the snow's soft. Like, why do I need to, you know, shocks? Like, I don't I don't know if that's the connection that they Yeah, make. And I mean, it's kind of a, I but feel it's like so it's a little important. bit of a daunting thing for mm -hmm. people to try to figure out how to tweak it and, you know, adjust it and stuff like that. There's a too. lot that goes into it, just yeah. like that and clutching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. yeah it's kind of a, a bear to tackle, but yeah, that's for sure. it's crucial. Yeah. Yeah. It is crucial. It makes a yeah. huge difference. Yeah, I don't think many of the sleds are very well suspended from the factory. No. You know, and even if they are, the oil doesn't last very long. Like, we've heard from some pretty top dogs in the industry that, uh, you know, three, four, or 500 miles, your oil is shot in your shocks, even your nice ones. So I think even just having those rebuilt, or revalved the stock shocks, the stock walkers, or the stock KYBs on a skidoo, you know, that goes a long way. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it makes a huge difference in predictability and feedback through the bars and in, you know, the tra just not getting totally beat to death on the trail <laughs> yeah, <seriously. laughs> on the way in and out. It can make such a huge difference. So, yeah, I don't know. The install can be a little t tricky and cost too, you know. It's yeah, pricey. I think that's a huge Not a $100 set of handlebars. It could be a $3,500 deal, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, but revalve is a great way to go too. You know, you, yeah. between seasons, get yeah. your stuff revalved, reoiled. Yeah, goes a long way. Yeah. So this one, um, this one's a little silly. But with all your guys' traveling and all these places you guys go and stuff, <laughs> what's <laughs> the? This is the one that I like is, the most. Yeah, the, I think this is Jeff's favorite too. What's the weirdest thing that you've ever brought on a sled trip? Weirdest thing? Uh, I don't even know. I it's got to be something that jumps My out mind here. goes. Um, it's like just m the most off the wall that somebody in your crew has brought with them. Yeah. 10 pound bag of rice. No, was, <laughs> <laughs> <That's a lot. laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to think of the best one because there's got to be some stuff from Blacko back in the day. I don't know. I mean, it's pretty close quarters. So we usually see like we're all up in each other's stuff. Like yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no hiding anything. Um, I don't know. Does Jordan bring his pillow around everywhere we go? <laughs> <laughs> he might. He's in the yeah. back seat all the time. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're. I mean, we're. I, think we're I wish I had a better answer for this <laughs> yeah, question. I wish I had yeah. something funny. We had a guy tag along on the sled deck from. Uh, oh yeah. Sycamus back to Revelstoke one time. Yeah. Uh, that I guess you could say we were bringing along with on the sled trip. <laughs> like he, he just deck. rode the sled deck yeah. back? Yeah, he was looking for a ride. Oh, just savage. Kind of <laughs> in the middle of the night, you know? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. We'll help you out, partner. Yeah. Huh. But no, I mean, we've got so much camera gear and sled gear and stuff yeah. like that in the trailer. It's, it's not it's, a lot of room yeah. for some random stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Everything I mean, has its purpose. We got yeah. some We got some old Articats, and uh, you, have, you have an old skidoo that we, like, rally around our yard and hit the snow banks and stuff in our driveway. Yeah, we yeah. bring those around yeah. sometimes. Yeah. 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 Just a little ditch banger. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of random stuff, though. You just never know what you're going to encounter on the road. Yeah. You know, that, too. So oh, we've, yeah. We've rewired trailer brakes on the side of the road and, mm -hmm. yeah, done all, all kinds of stuff. So we're usually pretty prepared in that way. Yeah. You know, tr chains, ropes, stuff like that to pull the truck out. But nothing too exotic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shay, you got that. I, I, that was my go-to on that one. I'm trying to think okay. of what the other ones were. I'll have okay. my. Oh, I do have. My do you guys have any other topics or touching points that you want to voice, talk about, or? I wanted to ask you guys. You know, in in your journey of getting going here and breaking into podcasting, um, you know, in snowmobiling, I'd say you guys have created 
such a sweet brand too. Oh, like, thank you. Thank you. It all, uh, your booth here, everything great. looks so clean. Like the <laughs> production value that you guys bring is awesome too. Yeah. And, um, thank you. you know, I'm just curious what, what brought the idea about and what made you decide to push into podcasting, you know, specifically to, as like, I would say the biggest pillar of your brand. Yeah. So, um, so this is our fourth season. Um, and so five years ago I created just the brand and, and, uh, I have a background in digital marketing and uh, print on demand and merch and stuff. And so like, I just wanted to utilize that skill set for something that I loved, which is snowmobiling. Um, so I ran that for a year and then, um, Jeff, the guy behind the camera, him and I have worked together for a really long time. And, um, we were just in the office getting some work done and, and he was like, dude, you should just like start a podcast for snowmobiling stuff. And so I was like, all right, cool. So I turned around and bought all the audio gear and stuff. And, <laughs> and he's got all the, the camera equipment already for his work. And, um, I was like, all right, well, I'll get some of the, my local buddies that I ride with and we'll get some beers and we'll just sit down and shoot the shit. And so we did, we started and, uh, you know, I've been speaking on camera with all the marketing and stuff for quite a while. So it wasn't uh, an issue for me to get in front of the lens or anything. And so we did a few episodes and uh right when we started jeff was like we should release every single friday all season long i was like all right yeah cool oh my god (laughs) it turned into a lot of work but but i think by like um i think by like episode four we started getting some attention so much so where i was like "Mm, maybe we need to not drink on this podcast (laughs) um and so yeah we went we went through the whole season, um, season one there. I did some virtual episodes and stuff, um, and we haven't done virtual since. Um, it's good for people, like we did Nick Pono up in Alaska, right? Like I'm not gonna run into him anytime soon. Um, so we did that, but then um, after that, I didn't wanna do any more virtual ones, and then we started coming to heydays, and like it's so much better to meet people in person and, and yeah. start the friendship thing, you know? Um, and then it's, it's just kinda grown, um, pretty rapidly um i think like season season one we had like climb that was like my only sponsor at the time um season two we had like four sponsors um and a lot of the sponsors give like discount codes and so we track the number of sales that we're pushing you know for these companies and we did pretty well um and then season three last year it went from four to 16 sponsors um, just because it gained so much attention last year i signed to, on with polaris as an ambassador and, and it just gained a lot of attention and last year we um more than tripled our sales numbers from the previous season wow, for wow, our that's awesome <laughs> um so some pretty big numbers and stuff and and uh i mean just the reaction on social and people sending us messages like i've gotten messages from kids in high school like listening to the podcast is the only thing that gets me through the day while I have to listen to these stupid teachers or whatever, you know, just like so many, so many random, um, messages and, you know, time after time, after time, you just kind of see the growth and, and you get the reassurance from the industry of, you know, Hey, we're enjoying this or whatever. And, um, obviously we like to do it too, but so it just kind of fuels us to just keep going and see where, that's amazing. Go with it, so. Do you think you could do this in any other sport but snowmobiling? Like, um, me personally, no, because yeah. I don't do anything but snowmobile. Um, so I don't, I don't know. That's what I, I was mean, gonna say because people hard. ask us all the time, like with Boondock, why you know why don't you guys do dirt stuff in the summer, like dirt bikes or side by sides yeah, or something like not, that? It's not us. Right. Right. We we're sledders, man. Yeah. It's hard to. You're so I mean, that stuff's fun. It's easy yeah. to talk right. about someone being, you know. Yeah, I'll never get into it like yeah. a sled. Right. Yeah. But I feel like it consumes you enough, right? <laughs> you're like, well, yeah. it's not only in the winter time, right? You guys are planning all the way through yeah. summer and stuff, so you're not only doing snow stuff in the in the winter. Yeah. If you did dirt too, like, and you talk about doing <laughs> an episode every week, you know, like it's crazy mm-hmm. how fast the weeks go by. Yeah, totally go yeah. So it does take a fair amount of planning to uh, try and get as far ahead as we can and have a good plan going into it to sure. do that successfully. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's being on the road and snowmobiles, you know, maintenance, like all these unforeseen <laughs> things, the adversity that you deal with and yeah. what comes mm-hmm. up, mm-hmm. Um, it's amazing that we make as many deadlines as we do. So, yeah. Uh, that's kind of where our head's been at. But I wanted to ask you that because, 
you know, snowmobiling, I think is just such a unique community and everybody yeah. that, uh, that everybody that does it, you know, feels that it's hard to explain to somebody that doesn't ride a snowmobile what it's all about. Um, you know, so I, I just think it's really cool. The brand that you guys have built and Thank how you. good it is for this community. And I wish, uh, I wish you guys were around when I was back in high school. Cause I just spent like hours on the do talk forums. Yeah. You know, like all the sledding <laughs> just forums, and everything. Right? Yeah. because it's great. Like podcasts are informational. You know, I love learning stuff and listening to people talk in depth. You know, yep. anyone that's still listening to this right now, like probably genuinely cares about what yep. we have to say. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's, so I'm, you can learn a lot. I'm sure you guys get it with your fan base too. It's kind of almost like a cult following. Right. You yeah. Know, those people that are so invested watching your videos all the way, you know, the retention through all the videos, like you, you know, that those guys really care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when you meet somebody like that and That's they call really out like a certain yeah. thing that happened in a certain episode in the middle of the season or whatever. And yeah. Yeah. it's just a blip in your mind, but you the remember it too. Yeah. And you're like, okay, this person actually watches the yep. stuff. Yeah. 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 It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of work as, as you guys know with all the video stuff too um i think last year at hey days we did uh we did 17 episodes last year oh, wow. <laughs> um, so much so that like uh we didn't get to partake in anything else within just, hey days right there's year. so much going just on chopping events, it up and, yeah. yeah so like this year we're doing all of them today on friday and we only have two scheduled for tomorrow nice and nice. so we're kicking it hanging out shaking hands all that kind of stuff and none on sunday good so. for you guys that's great i mean <laughs> that's a good strategy hey days yeah. only happens once a year right yep. so yep. there's so much to do that's the thing it's like it's, yeah. it's hard to cram it all in but we're learning too yeah <laughs> yeah 100 percent. well cool did you have any no last things no that's covered it Anything this has been awesome you guys yeah, thank yeah you thanks guys. for having yeah, us thanks for thanks for no. being on yeah we cool. appreciate Appreciate you guys yeah of course so. We'll have to stay in touch about figuring out how to get on the snow together. That's the next step, right? You came on the that podcast. The now now yeah. we got to get on yeah. the snow yeah. together. <laughs> so everybody can watch for that episode on our YouTube channel this winter. We'll make it happen. Yeah. Hell Heck yeah. yeah. That'd be sick. Yeah. That'd be super cool. Um, yeah. Well, uh, actually, we do have the way that we in these episodes, we have our guests ask the listeners and viewers a random question. So putting you boys on the spot and then we cut it for TikTok and Thumb Warriors voice their opinions and all that I kind of stuff. Yeah. So is there something that you guys can think of that you would like to ask the audience? Um, it could be about fitness stuff. It could be mods. It could be travel, whatever is something you can think of. You want one from each of us? Yep. What's, uh, what's your favorite month out of the year to ride snowmobiles? Mm. Yeah, we're big spring riders. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like we love pow days. I was gonna say spring. spring is, yeah, you yeah. don't really think about it. That that the March, Pretty March, nice. April time yeah. get some good snow. A lot of cool stuff to find then too. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I would say where is the best place to ride snowmobiles? Like where should we go next? There you go. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. let us know in the comments below. Yeah. Cool. Well. Yeah. We well, yeah. want to ask a couple of those funny questions we had. We already months. we already did. Some of them, yeah. Most overrated, underrated, and the weirdest thing. Oh, damn, I wanted to ask the weirdest thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I told you we did favorite. not have a good answer for it. <laughs> we weren't <laughs> weird enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we did. We had somebody that. What's, uh, what's one thing you guys wish non snowmobilers knew about this sport? Ooh. Just he, he asked, uh, yeah. go ahead, tell him what they asked. What's, so they what's one thing that non-snowmobilers knew about this sport? What's what's something you guys wish they knew? I wish people knew how physical it is. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like you get a sled yeah. stuck a couple of times, like you're exhausted. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. right? like, At 10,000 And then you feet. start making yeah. more mistakes, and then you get stuck more. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I'd say that, like... Uh, physical mental side of it too because this is a mental game too it's kind of like yeah. golf you know mm -hmm. if you're like shanking relatable a bunch of shots <laughs> out on the course like you continue to play bad same thing as sledding you get stuck a few times yeah. it gets in your head you get stuck more you hit something you know it yep. kind of cascades like that yeah, yeah. so that would be my answer yeah yeah it's a good, good answer good one yeah. yep cool uh did you I, no, that was exactly okay. what I was going to say. the words out of my mouth. Okay. No, seriously, yeah. <laughs> well, perfect. Awesome. Well, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this episode up. Sluts and listeners, thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.